As a business owner running ads for your e-commerce store, you're likely hearing a lot of noise around different software, plugins, and tools that you need that all seem to promise the world. There's a lot of noise out there, and I'm generally an advocate for the idea that a store and the ads platform is all you need to start measuring and seeing growth. But there's been one tool myself and the team at my agency, Big Flare, have been getting to grips with over the last year that I want to run through with you today. It's taken our attribution and tracking capabilities to a point where we have real confidence in them, and that's something that's crucial to anyone serious about Google Ads. It's called Northbeam, and today we'll be running through what it is, some of its features, and if it's the right tool for your business or not. In case you're not already familiar with it, I want to take a second to run through exactly what Northbeam is. According to their website, it's a universal ad attribution platform for media buyers, business executives, and marketing agencies that want to better understand how exactly their ad spend is performing and how to scale it. So what does this actually mean in practice? Well, to me, it's a dashboard that gives me better insight into tracking our ads and more accurate attribution than just using the ad platforms themselves. So I know exactly where sales are coming from, when I'm running my campaigns. It's also ideal for giving a snapshot of how all our media across different platforms is performing in one place, meaning I spend way less time putting manual reports together when I want to look at the bigger picture across my accounts. If that makes sense, the best way I can explain what Northbeam brings to the table is by jumping in and showing you some of the features and what you could use them for. Let's head over to my computer screen so I can walk you through it. All right, guys, so I am here inside my Northbeam account for one of my clients, and I'm going to show you this overview page first. This is going to be the first thing you see when you first log into your fully set up Northbeam account. Now, at the top, you've got a selector for which attribution model you want to use. Uh, by default, I think it's going to be on clicks only, uh, but I've switched it to clicks and views and influencers. And in just a moment, I'm going to explain to you the differences between the main attribution models in here. But for now, let's use clicks and views and influencers and let's do a breakdown by platform and let's look at the data that we can see oh and i'm on the past 28 days here so obviously you can do a date filter and you can choose to do by day or by week and the first things it summarizes for you are your spend your media efficiency radio ratio your revenue and your average order volume um the spend here is useful to know because uh, when you look in individual platforms like Google Ads or Facebook Ads, you're not going to see your spend all aggregated into one place. So immediately you can see how much you're spending across all your platforms and how much revenue you're making across all platforms, all in one nice handy place. And when you've got these two metrics in one place, you can then also easily calculate your media efficiency ratio, which is simply your total revenue divided by your total spend. So you can see how that changes here over time. Average order value, interesting to see how it changes over time and you can also get a view of the difference between returning customers versus new customers. So in this case you can see, as we might expect, that the returning customers have a higher AOV than do new customers. And in this particular account that's probably because the returning customers are the types of people who are going to come and buy accessories and additional add-ons for the main product that this client sells. And then if you scroll down, you get this breakdown, the cash snapshot breakdown. So this is where you can easily see broken down by platform or whatever breakdown you want to use over here. You can see your MER, your true customer acquisition cost, ECR, new visits, total visits and transactions. Now, I, put, I don't usually use this view for making decisions on media buying campaigns. There's a different view that I usually use for that, which I will show you in a moment. But first, I want to explain to you the different attribution models because selecting the right attribution model for you and your business is key to making this platform work for you and key to making it give you data and results that you can make an informed decision on. So right now I'm using clicks, views and influencers. And what you can do is there's a model comparison tool. So if you go here and go model comparison tool, it will take you to this tool here where you can compare the results of different models. But first, I want to explain to you what are the differences between the three main models in my view, which is uh, linear, clicks only, 
and then clicks and views and influencers or clicks and views i'd probably just lump these two together as kind of the same thing depending on whether you're doing influencers or not but to help explain this i've got this little spreadsheet that i did so first of all imagine that we have this customer journey so uh someone sees uh a ad on youtube but they don't click it's just a of an ad view and then next uh they click on your facebook ad uh, but they don't buy yet and then next they come directly to your site and then they buy so linear is a very simple attribution model it just gives an even weighting to every touch point in the customer journey but it doesn't take into account views so it's a, it's a clicks based model and it's just really really sort of simple and straightforward even distribution uh, evenly distribute the sale to every touch point that happened in that journey so in this example it would give zero percent of the sale to the youtube ad view because that was just a view it wasn't a click and then uh there was an ad click and a direct visit so linear would give 50 percent of the sale to the facebook ad and 50 percent of the sale to the direct visit now clicks only is where it starts to get a bit more interesting clicks only is actually really similar to linear but the main difference is it doesn't give any credit to direct visits, organic search visits, or branded paid search visits if there was some other touch point in the journey, right? So in this case, then, if we do clicks only, it will still give 0% to the YouTube ad view um, because it's, an, it's a view and we're doing clicks only. And it will give 0% to the direct visit because there were other touch points in this path. So in this path, it ends up giving 100% of the credit to the Facebook ad click. Now, for advertisers that have a lot of top of funnel advertising like Facebook ads, TikTok ads and YouTube ads, I would normally recommend doing clicks and views or like, which is pretty much the same as clicks and views and influencers if you're also running influencers. Um, and what this does is it's similar to clicks only in that it won't count direct visit, organic search or branded paid search if there were other touch points, but it will try and count your ad views. So if someone viewed that YouTube ad and then shortly afterwards they clicked to your Facebook ad and then they came to your site and bought, then clicks and views or clicks and views and influencers would give a split between the YouTube ad view and the Facebook ad click. So this, if you're not doing much top of funnel uh, awareness stuff, then possibly clicks only as the model for you. But if you do have a lot of Facebook ads, YouTube ads, TikToks, uh, like top of funnel stuff, it's probably gonna be better to include views because it's gonna give some weighting to those views. And those, those views do have value. It's questionable exactly what the value is, but there is some value there. Like if someone watched you know, a two minute video uh, that you put up on YouTube and then like they watched a bunch of TikToks and, and they saw your Facebook ad a bunch of times that they didn't click and then they came to the site and, and bought. It's reasonable to assume that those ad views that didn't involve a click, those ad views did have some value. So this attribution model here tries to solve for that by giving some credit to the ad view. Now, right now, I am not clear on whether this model will, will just do 50-50 here or will it try and use some machine learning to give a more intelligent weighting? Would it do something, would it like use your data and some machine learning to try and figure out that, ah, okay, uh, actually this was 30% and then this was 70%. Would it do something like this? Like Google's data-driven attribution would do something like this. It looks at all your data and it tries to see which touch points on the customer journey are driving the most value and to upweight them accordingly. Now, right now, I'm not sure if Northbeam is doing something like this or is it doing something like this? I've actually just reached out to their support team uh, for an answer to that question. So when I get an answer to that question, I tell you what, I will pop it in the comments below just so you know as well. But whatever Northbeam is doing, it's doing some sort of distribution of credit that includes ad views, but doesn't include direct visit, organic search, or branded paid search if you choose this attribution model. Now, for this particular account, that's the attribution model that we're using because uh, we've got a lot of uh, views and influencers being tracked for this particular account. And I wanna show you the model comparison tool. So once again, come to the hamburger up here, go model comparison. Uh, let's just max that so you can see more. 
Uh, so you come to the hamburger model comparison. And then what you can do here is you can compare clicks only to clicks, views and influences. And I think this gives you some really interesting data, especially if you're in the business right now of trying to grow your business through top of funnel awareness campaigns. Because if you only look at clicks, so here's revenue from clicks only, and here's revenue from clicks, views and influences. And then this is the the difference. Now, at the grand total, you'll see no difference because the total is the total. The only difference is the way we attribute that total across the various uh, platforms. And what's interesting to see is look at something like Facebook, right? Facebook, if you only look at clicks only, it's doing about 158 grand of revenue uh, over the past 28 days. But if you try and account for views as well, Actually, Facebook goes up to 255. So if you are only looking at clicks, you may be undervaluing Facebook because there's a lot of activity happening where people just view an ad and then later convert through some other channel. So it's reasonable to assume that there's some value to that view. And this is the kind of difference you can see that really might make a big difference in how you target uh, your campaigns, in how you grow your campaigns. Like without this kind of view, you might think, oh, Facebook ads isn't working. But with this view, you might get the idea, oh, okay, there's there's lots of view sales happening here. Maybe Facebook ads is worth a bit more investment. Now, similarly for Google ads, you get the opposite, right? Uh, revenue on clicks only is much higher. Whereas if you account for views, some of that sales volume that's in here is actually just getting attributed elsewhere, probably to Facebook. So what this is showing you is that when you account for views, um, like Google Ads is a click heavy platform and you're actually getting less awarded to Google Ads because that value is going somewhere else, probably Facebook Ads and some influencer stuff as well. You can see influencers goes higher when we use this attribution model. YouTube ads, uh, once again, it's quite a big difference, 325%. So if we were just looking at click data, we would assume YouTube is only doing about 10K in revenue, but actually it's like doing 3X that if we account for view data as well. So this is really, this model comparison tool is gonna to be really important to use when you're deciding which attribution model to use in your business. I do think um, there's a lot of stuff in here, but I think it's gonna be either linear clicks only or or one of these two, clicks and views or clicks and views and influencers. And you can use this model comparison tool to help you decide between the bunch. Uh, and then the final part that I wanted to show you in Northbeam is the sales report. Now, there are two other areas. You can see your customer LTV here, or you can drill down into individual orders and see exactly what their customer journey looked like, which channel it was awarded to, all that kind of lovely stuff. It's a lot more granular. But what I would normally look at when you're trying to make decisions about where to invest more media spend, where to invest more advertising budget, this is the place to come once you've decided on your attribution model. So we've decided on our attribution model, clicks and views and influences. Uh, in the overview, it's going to default to transactions and CAC, but you want to switch it to revenue and ROAS for most e-commerce advertisers because that's going to uh, actually account for the revenue. Transactions and CAC doesn't actually account for revenue and without revenue in the picture, you can't really get as good a picture of your overall profitability. Transactions and CAC has its place, but just not for this kind of decision making that I'm doing right here. Uh, we've got attribution windows set to 30. Now, importantly, no matter what you put here, views will always be set to one day attribution. So they, they if they see an ad, but it takes two days or more for them to then uh, do something else like buy or click on another thing, then that view just won't get attributed. It has to be within a one day window. And this 30 day attribution window is really just for the clicks. Um, and then we're breaking down by platform once again, we're using accrual performance, and then we get a nice summary graph here, but where, where Northbeam really starts to work some magic for us is down here, because this is where we can see by platform, the spend, the revenue, and the ROAS, plus the LTV ROAS and the LTV customer acquisition cost broken down by channel. Now. In the individual uh, platforms, in Google Ads, it's gonna show you a higher revenue and it's gonna show you a higher ROAS. And then Facebook Ads is gonna show you a higher revenue and it's gonna show you a higher ROAS. Now, the numbers that these platforms show you should be taken with a pinch of salt because each platform is usually only going to be reporting uh, it's going to be reporting 100% of the sales that it contributed to. It's not going to be attributing sales across platforms because like, it just doesn't have that data. Like Facebook ads only has the data on whether a journey with Facebook ads inside 
led to a conversion, yes or not. So the, the numbers you see inside Google ads and Facebook ads and YouTube ads and all that, it is important, but it's not really as close to the truth as this. You need to use both ROAS numbers. You need to use, let's take Google ads for an example. I need to use not only the ROAS I see in Google ads, but also the ROAS I see here. And let's say that my target ROAS for Google ads is 3X. And let's say in Google ads is reporting a 5X ROAS. So in Google ads, if I just looked at that data, I might think, great, this is overperforming versus target, let's spend more. But then you come into Northbeam or a similar multi uh, attribution model based um, platform such as Northbeam. There are others out there, of course. And you come into Northbeam and then you see, ah, actually, when we account for sales being attributed to other channels, when we're accounting for the complexity of customer journeys, actually, it looks like Google Ads ROAS might only be 2.33, which is a lot less rosy than that 5 ROAS Google is reporting and at that point I would then go ah, okay Google Ads needs to be at a higher ROAS so then I might go back into Google Ads and configure things to aim for a 6x ROAS when Google Ads as reported in Google Ads gets to 6x then we'll come back to Northbeam and we'll check okay is it on that 3x that I need yes or no and you just keep making adjustments like that don't expect the two ROAS numbers to match perfectly they never will they're telling a different type of story but do expect them to correlate directly, i.e. if you need a higher ROAS in, as reported in Northbeam, then go into Google Ads and set it to a higher ROAS based on wherever it is at the moment. So this, uh, I think when you're making decisions for where to spend your, your media budget, when you're an e-commerce advertiser who's got multiple channels running and you're spending decent amounts across multiple channels, this is where you want to be. You want to be looking at the ROAS, like broken down by platform with the best attribution model selected for you and then you want to use this to fuel and aid with your decision making when you go into individual platforms and set their, their budget and ROAS targets in there. So after looking under the hood of the platform you're probably thinking either wow this is going to change my life where do I sign up or this is just another convoluted tool that tells me things I already know. But before you've decided either way, there's some things to keep in mind to work out if this is something that can bring you real value or not. Firstly, where are you at in your growth journey? Have you just dipped your toes into Facebook ads or Google? Are you still trying to scale your campaigns beyond the 1K per day mark? If so, you probably wouldn't be able to get the most out of Northbeam quite yet. And there are other higher priority ways you could invest both your money and time, like improving your creative or running experiments within your ad platform of choice. I reckon it's worth really cracking one channel first, then moving on to another, before looking at a platform that pulls those ad platforms together holistically. On the other hand, let's say you've got both Google and Facebook working like a well-oiled machine, and now you're looking at expanding to something new like TikTok ads. This is where a more sophisticated reporting and attribution tool starts to become really useful. It cleans up those slightly messy customer journeys, shows you which of those platforms is really bringing you a good ROAS, and gives you a load more data points to decide where you should be allocating your spend. Aside from where you are in terms of your growth, it's worth really thinking about what type of business you run and choosing a partner that's tailor-made for that vertical. In my opinion, if you're an e-commerce business driving a serious amount of revenue each month through multiple different ad platforms, then Northbeam's great. It's a fairly cost-effective choice to bring all your data together. The customer support is really strong when it comes to understanding how e-commerce businesses operate and their priorities. On the other hand, if you're marketing something different like an app or you're an e-commerce business that isn't a multi-channel advertiser spending a lot on multiple different ad channels as of yet, then your time, money and attention might be better spent elsewhere. Hopefully now, regardless of if you'd never heard of Northbeam before or if you're deciding whether to pull the trigger, you're in a position where you can decide if this is the right choice for you and your business. I'd love to hear if these SaaS reviews are something you find useful. If there's another platform you want me to dive into on the channel, drop a comment below and I will be sure to make a video with my honest thoughts on it.